The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to KCD Software uh, Onboarding Webinar. Uh, this is all about presets and just getting started with the software. Everybody who gets KCD has uh, different things they need to do with the software. And we do have plenty of people who build face frame cabinets, frameless, uh, plenty of closet designers and manufacturers. So what I want to do is kind of give you a good starting point. My name is Ken Fry. I've been working with the company for quite some time. And I'm going to give you a few tricks on the presets. And we'll get started right now. As far as the frame cabinets over here, this library, you notice if you drop down, you have quite a few other choices. and you know, if you're a closet manufacturer, you would want it to start up with closets when you come into the software. It just saves you a bit of time. So there are plenty of places in the software to do presets, but this is probably one of the primary locations to go to initially. So if you go to change, edit system, third from the bottom, edit startup, you're going to notice, you know, you have some doors, but there's a library tab. If you click on it, You'll notice that closet's number three in the list. If I click to the left of closet and just click OK, it puts it to the top of the list. So that way, every time you start up, if you're a closet designer or manufacturer, that would start in a place you'd want it to. I'm going to go back to change, edit system, edit startup. There are a lot of other things in here. I'm going to go to library again. I'm going to go to frameless and just start that at the top. You'll notice also on the right side, this group and a number. What the group is, it's a color group. So when you go into 3D, basically you have up to five different color schemes. So if you had five rooms in a design or a job, what you could do is tell it to use a different color group in each room so you could show a different color or texture on the material. I'm going to set all of these to one because I find that if I don't have to think about it when I go into 3D. It just starts up and go to change the color, and I know it's group one. I don't have to think about which one it is. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, click OK here. You'll notice that it starts in frameless now. There's some other things under change, edit system, and edit startup that you might want to take a look at. Uh, the doors, okay, you notice that the top door, drawer, front, and base door are all set to you know, different arch raise panel, square raise panel. Uh, a lot of people are doing shaker style today. So you can come over here and change default doors. And it will bring up our door list, which is quite extensive. There's over 300 door styles. So if you come here, you'll see that it says square flat panel. I could drag that up to the top door over here, which is the upper doors for the cabinets grab this and drag it over here and it changes it and maybe for the drawer front you know some people do just a flat drawer this one has smaller top and bottom rails we're just going to bring that over and I'm going to save it as a default so that way every time I start up the software and put anything up it's going to be shaker style and I'll just set in the room now notice it does change it here um, these extra doors, we'll talk about some other time, but they are doors that you may want to change other than your standard doors on a job. And I'm going to go ahead and just click OK on this. And we're going to start putting some things up. Now, when I click Add Wall over here, well, how do I know what the wall height is and, and some of these other details about what I'm about to put up? Well, in the program under Change, there's a place where you can click set wall defaults. And when I click that, the wall height set for 96. So if that's a number you use more often or this particular job is 96, you could just set that. What most people should do is set it for a number you run into more often and then save as permit default. So that way, when you start up the software, at least you know its starting point. Um, and then on any particular job that's different, you just change that number and set it for that job only. Whenever you save a job, standards are saved with that job specifically. Um, I'm going to put 108 inches just because and save it permanently. Maybe that's something I do more often. 
And there's another location you want to be familiar with under change. You'll see where it says set shop standards. Now, each library over here, I'm in frameless, but closets, frame, all of those libraries have their own under change shop standards. So, in other words, when I come in here at the floor to top of cabinets, uh, upper cabinets for frameless cabinets is set for 84. The height of the upper cabinet set for 30. But if you do more 36 on the uppers and you want that, at 90 to the top of it, I mean, go ahead and set it. And now you've got a starting point that makes a little more sense. And this is everything from your three quarter material. Maybe you want five eighths. You can set all of these questions to what you do more often. And when you're done with setting this for what you do more often, you would want to save it permanently. So I click save, you say yes. So every time I start up the software and I go to put up a wall, it's going to come up and drag it up here. You'll notice that it shows up at 108. That's because I set it to that. So I can click OK and I can see the dimension. Click Add Wall. Notice I go to the left side, kind of get close and just drag it down and it will snap to location there. And notice these dimensions here are the inside dimensions of the wall, not the outside. Now I'm noticing that these dimensions are kind of small. My eyes aren't as good as they used to be. And there's a lot of creature comforts as far as software goes. What What is comfortable to you makes a lot of sense. And you should be able to set it for something that's easier for you to see and to work with. It's like getting into a car and setting your seat just a certain way and getting your steering wheel just right. You want to be comfortable because you're going to be using the software and that's going to you know, be be important to the, the whole design process. You don't want to be uncomfortable. So if we go to change down here, edit system and edit startup, once again, there is a thing in here called fonts. So I can go to fonts. Notice there's dimension font, note font, and heading font, which I'm going to cover in just a second on the heading. But the dimension font is this right here, what we see for the dimension. So I'm going to up this to... I'm going to go to 18 just to pick a number. And it's okay just to pick a number. Your monitor, your screen, depending on the resolution, could vary a little bit. So, you know, change it, click OK, see if you like it, see if you don't like it. It's it's totally up to you. And uh, what I'm going to do now is, since I've got the font the right size or the way I like it, I'm also going to bring up something else. When you go to, to design a job and every time you go to print it, there is in the upper left corner of the page, what's gonna print with it is a heading. Well, that heading is your company name. This is something that when you print things uh, and give them to people, you wanna have that information correct and it should be a way of you or having them be able to contact you either by email or by a phone number. So if you hadn't already set it up when it told you or asked you to when you first start up the program, you can go to change, edit system, and you're going to notice it says edit company heading down here. So you can click on edit company heading, and you notice I've already typed in KCD software, our phone number, that's my email if you, you ever want to shoot me an email. Um, but the idea is, and then the address. And I can show the date and the heading, but this is important because as long as you have something that identifies you on the printout, that's going to that's gonna help out if they get a drawing from you and six months later, they want to contact you. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and click OK, and that's what you should do. Uh, once you're done with that, you never have to really change it um, uh, again unless you, you move or change your phone number. There are ways of customizing your heading so you could get uh, a logo in it, and that would be something else that we can show you later on. Uh, but we'll click add wall here. Notice I just go to the end of the wall, just drag it up. I can type the number that I want over here. So if I type 67.5 and just click OK, it changes it. Um, to make a wall active, well, what does that mean? That just means when you click on it, that's the wall you're about to work on. We're looking at the floor plan. All right, so when you're looking at a floor plan, that's nice when you're moving around from one wall to the other. 
but what you're going to find is when you're laying out a design, you should go to the elevation view. And there's a lot of ways to do things. There's a lot of shortcuts and tricks. If I double click in the center of my screen, in the open space, I come right to my elevation view. If I take my mouse and put it off to the side, away from the wall and double click, I'm back to floor plan. Double click, um, elevation. Notice it tells me room one, wall one. If I wanna go to the wall on the left, I just single click on that diagonal line over there and it brings me over to the left-hand wall too. If I double click off to the side, you'll notice that that's the wall that's active now because that's the one I, we clicked on. Go to elevation, click on the right to go to that wall one, click over here on the right, go to wall three. I can hit one on my keyboard, two or three, and they're just shortcuts. Uh, there are all sorts of little shortcuts in the software. You can always go up to help in KCD and do a search and look for shortcut and it would give you a list of shortcuts. Um, I'll also offer up the documentation at a, um, a location on our website so that you can you could actually download that if you want. All right, so at this point, when you put up your walls, there are cases where you may need to change the wall length or something of that nature. So when I double click on the wall that I wanna change, it brings this information back up on the screen and I can type any number I want. So if I took a bad measurement, or someone changed something out on the job site after I measured, at least now we, we can change it. You click OK, make sure it's correct, and now you can start laying out your design. Now, everything I'm about to show you as far as laying out a design really is the same for cabinets or closets. Um, it's, it's just some basic, how do you put something in reference to your measurement on the left side of the wall to the uh, left side of the, the unit, or maybe you measured from the right side of the wall over here to the right side of the unit. There's all these different ways to locate things in KCD, and it really depends on how you, you basically got your information. Now, there are a couple other things that I find are useful. A lot of times when you start up KCD, sometimes the, this toolbar right up here has a lot of good tools, but sometimes it's missing a few things you might want. And I noticed there's an undo here, but I don't see a redo. Um, sometimes when you hit undo, what that does is it allows you to keep hitting it and going back to places that um, you want to go back to because you went too far, you made a mistake. Uh, but there is a thing called redo. And so I'm going to go back over on the toolbar here, and you'll notice there's a little drop down. If you drop down on that and add or remove buttons, you'll notice there's all these other choices. Not all of them are checked. Uh, I, I noticed the redo wasn't, so I'm just coming over to click on redo. If you didn't have undo, you'd probably want that too. There's other things like uh, delete room, which you may not want to put in there, um, but it is an option um, to do so. So I just added that one thing in the list in the drop down, and I'm just going to click off to the side. And you'll notice I have this undo here, but I do have a redo that's grayed out. So that way, if I clicked on add wall, dragged a wall up, you know, made a mistake somewhere, I can always hit undo, you know, and then said, oh, I went too far, I can hit redo. And you could keep, like I said, keep hitting undo and it just keeps, you know, going back. Um, we're going to get rid of, we'll, we'll change that wall dimension right there. And you see we're back to what we originally had. Uh, I'm going to double click in the open space. And I'm just going to put a window up just to kind of give you the basics of placing a window up. So if I double click on window on the menu on the right, let me just cancel this again. Um, the menu is quite full of, of things, okay? So basically getting used to where things are in the program is probably your biggest learning curve. Uh, putting things up isn't really that hard. Um, it's just getting used to where things are. And there is a search up here, by the way. So if you ever need to look for something, you could always just type the first few letters of what you're looking for. But I'm going to go to Window because I see it right here. It's at the top of your menu. And if I go here, you'll notice the Locate From. 
<clears throat> excuse me, the locate from uh, is measuring right now, if I go and type down in this location a number, because that's checked on, that's going to measure from left end of wall to left side of the unit. So if I just click in location and, and put 37 and just click OK, you're going to notice that on the left side over here, it's 37. And uh, if, if we wanted, we could have double clicked back on this window, the unit number itself. You'll notice it says R to R here. Well, that's measuring from right end of wall, this side, to the right side of that window. So sometimes when you measure, you may measure from the left side to a certain point or from the right side. Uh, there are other options here where you might measure left to center of the unit. So some people like to measure left to center of the window. And if you click it, you just have to tell it what the measurement that you took is. In a perfect world, you might want to um, click the button over here. It's called little C button over here. This will just center it on the wall. So if I click on that little C button, it calculates the location. I click OK, and it's centered on the wall. That rarely happens. Uh, that's you know the framers would have to be perfect, uh, and a lot of times things are slightly off. So you know if it were 44 and a half inches from the left to left, click click on it. Remember it's on left to left here. I just go 44.5. Click OK and it puts it at 44 and a half there. Now, as far as bringing things back up on a unit, I guess I should have told you this before, but there's an imaginary circle going around that unit number. So you do need to click on the unit number or close to it to bring back the information over on the right for that unit. All right, so if I click like up in here and double click, it's gonna say add change wall. And that's because I wasn't close enough to the unit number, which, you know, we should be able to change the wall by clicking on it also. But if you accidentally clicked on it and brought it up, just hit cancel. You know, no big deal. If we want to start putting something in relationship to something else, such as a sink maybe going directly under that window, we just go to sink cabinets, double click on a sink base, we can go 30. 5.5 because I don't want to go 36 and we just can use this next to option now the biggest mistake people make is they think locate from this section here is related or has something to do with the next to these two areas locate from and next to are separate there's a little gray line there you can kind of see it but next to you can put anything left of, center on, or right of, anything that exists on a wall. So if I want, I can go next to one, go center on. And, and keep in mind, there are options above the OK button for different types of sinks. Uh, and there are also details within this list. But that's for now, we're just getting used to locating and putting a few things up. So I'm going to click OK. And you're going to notice it just centers it on that window. And if I want to put the next item up, which is a process of elimination. We just go over to appliances, let's say, go to dishwasher. It came up a standard width. I could say I want it next to two, which it used the last unit. I could go left of or right of. So I'm going to go left of, click OK, and it just puts it to the left of that last unit. If I don't like it right where I have it, I can hold my mouse button down on the unit number and I can drag it, and you'll see a little dotted uh, ghost image of of the dishwasher, and it kind of, you know, I get it close to there, and it will actually snap to location. If I leave a little space, oh, I just brought it off the floor there a little bit. That's okay. Brought it back down. But if I grab it and drag it a little here, you'll see that there's a space. And that's okay, because sometimes you want a space. Uh, if you drag it over the unit, it's going to warn you you're about to overlap unit three with two. And it does show a negative number here of how much it's overlapping. There are cases where people do make things wider and overlap things because maybe in a face frame scenario or a filler, they might oversize the filler and then deal with it later. So 
So once again, there is a reason why it allows you to do that, but you want to be warned that you're overlapping something. You can say no here, and I can just grab this, drag it back over, and then bring it back into that spot, and it'll snap to location. A couple other things, when it comes to laying out and putting things up in KCD, you're going to see that you know, if you go to a base cabinet section, you'll see three, four drawer. You know, I just put the things up that I need. And when I double click on a unit, I can tell it any size I want. And then remember, I can tell it next to, well, we'll go next to two. So we'll go next to two here. I got to change it. Go left of, and then just click OK. So it's pretty easy to put things left, right, or center. Um, you know, it's just a matter of of picking what you want. Now, you remember how I said about the search? Well, if you are looking for, let's say, I'm I'm in this section and I'm looking for a six drawer base or a three, uh, let's say a two drawer base. I don't see it in here, right? <clears throat> so if I go to search and I I hit six, right? Well, notice anything with six, it says right here. I've got all these different things, but drawer base, base six drawer, there's other combinations in here of six drawer, but I can pick a six drawer. And now, once again, you notice I just highlighted it, brought my mouse over, held it down and dragged it. So you can drag in the software. Um, once, once again, you'll find that uh, if you didn't want to drag it or you want to tell it a specific size, just double click on it, tell it the size you want. Um, we can also go here. You notice there's 10 and a half inches here. I could in width go plus, and I'm going to go uh, nine inches because I'm going to leave it a little, I'm going to put a filler in there. So you can do math in here. You just go plus nine and next thing you know, it just added to that and you can then come back to, I'm going to close the search, come down into base units. And once again, if I don't know where the fillers are, I could have typed the word filler but it's, it happens to be down in here, filler base. I can click once on it, hold, let go of my mouse button, hold it down and drag it in the space, and it comes up the size I want. And if you're having any trouble dragging, you know, initially, um, you know, just double click on the thing you want, tell it 1.5, tell it to go to the right of unit five. That would be the easiest way to do this. All right. Now, there's a couple other things as far as uh, changing uh, views. You can hit the space bar twice. That does the same thing as double click. So you're going to find there's a lot of shortcuts. Like I said, you can go look up shortcuts if you want. And when it's the time to go over... Um, you know, going to 3D presentation, all of that, it's just a matter of going up to the 3D button here and clicking on 3D. Uh, we're going to put a couple other items in here. I'm just going to drag unit four into the trash bin. That's always good to know about on the bottom left. I'm going to go back to Lazy Susan's. You notice there's a base 45 here. There's a Lazy Susan base. I'm just going to double click on that. And I'm going to cancel because what I was doing is just single clicking on this. So getting used to your library is not a bad idea. Um, you know, you just click on here. You can kind of uh, be kind of, you know, look around, click on things. You know, what what is down in the entertainment section? There's all sorts of combinations of things. And we try to give you good presets so that you, you have something there to work with instead of having to create it from scratch. I'm going to go back up to uh, base units and I'm just going to go lazy Susan base and it came up 36 by 36. It says left corner, but if I did click right corner and click, okay, it would try to put it in here. It would warn you you're going to overlap. But, but remember when you pick a unit that can go left corner or right corner, if you pick right corner, it's going there. You don't have to locate it, but I'm going to go left corner, click. Okay. And you're going to notice there's a space here. And we can go ahead and uh, go back to base units. If we wanted to put a tray cabinet, we just single click or double click on it. Uh, click 12. Now you can go 12 space three slash four also. And 
I can go next to four, the last thing we worked on, unit four, and we can go right of, and we just click OK, and it, it goes in there. So very easy to locate things in KCD. Um, you know, there's there's going to be a lot of other things that you're going to want to be able to do. Um, if I double click off to the side, I can start seeing my design going somewhere. And you can double click back down, come over to the left side to kind of look over here. So remember, if you want to work on this wall, all you do is click on it to go to that wall. Um, as far as um, some other things that you might want to work with, um, if I go to top units here, I'm going to go to top 45, click OK. I'm going to double click on top cabinet. I'm going to make it, uh, I don't know, 19 inches. I'm going to go to the right of the other unit. Now notice down here it says one opening, single, or pair. Remember, it's 17 and a half inch opening. If I wanted a pair, I could click that. I'm going to leave it one, and I'm going to click OK, and it just puts it to the right of that unit. If I want to make a copy of that, I can just double click on it and tell it to go next to the window, right? So I can just say one, go right of, and notice there's a little thing here called space. So if we put it to the right of this window here, we wouldn't have an inch and a half space. So I can come up into space, go 1.5. I can go right of. The biggest thing here is to click copy. If you click OK, all you're doing is moving that unit over here. So I make that mistake all the time, but if you click copy, it's going to make a copy and it's going to put it one and a half from the right. With all this information, it's it's pretty simple to just grab different units and put them up based on what you need. There are other units down here under custom top, designer top, you know, just look through here. All the designer top does is give you some two vertical opening options, maybe a microwave below, wine rack, dividers. Um, we'll just put something up with dividers below. I've got 24 and a half inch, uh, 24 and a quarter inch space here. Uh, maybe we want to leave, you know, at least an inch. So we'll just go, we'll just make it 23 for now more than an inch, an inch and a quarter, and I'll go to the right. But notice there's questions in here, lower opening height. So anything that pertains to the unit that we're putting up, number of dividers, is going going to go here. So we'll click OK. We'll take a look at it. And you'll notice if we were to change our dimension level, and there's different dimension levels in the program because in some cases you don't want to show your customer any dimensions. In some cases, you want to take the doors off the cabinets. You don't want to show those uh, um, doors. You want to show a higher dimension level for your shop. So let's go ahead and take the doors off. You can do that by going to doors and click show doors. Takes the doors off. If I go to doors and show doors, puts them back on. Now, once again, if I hit SD for show doors, it does the same thing. Now. I'm going to go to dimension level and I'm going to go three. And that shows my openings. Dimension level four will show my openings plus the three quarter material that I'm using for the box itself. And if I go over here to door size, it's going to bring the doors back up. And it's going to show my door size. Now in the software, it will print out door sizes. It will tell you the door style, you know, what kind of door it is, uh, give you all sorts of details on that. And it will also, if you build your doors, it can give you all the pieces to build it. Now I'm going to go back to three and hit SD for show doors, uh, just a, a shortcut. Now I noticed unit nine and 10 came up without any shells on them. That's because uh, someone uh, the other day had told me about, they wanted to set the number of shelves um, to default to zero in here. So we could basically um, set it so it it defaults how you'd like it to come up in the software. So, and that's on anything. That's from drawer fronts to anything else. There are some other videos at our, our website that get into setting unit defaults. Um, 
and you know, I recommend you watch those videos. Uh, the goal today is to kind of give you this quick introduction to presets and getting you know some basic concepts down with putting things up and having things come up closer to what you need. Um, now, once again, we go to dimension level two. Um, I can go back up to my fillers or my top section where my fillers are. Double click on it. I can go 1.25 because that's an inch and a quarter there. We're going next to 11, right of, and I just click OK. So pretty easy stuff to, to do. Um, there are a few little details in KCD that we will want to go over with you um, as far as shortcuts go. Uh, and let's see, some of the others, when you're done with the design, you would want to go to add handles and hinges right here on the toolbar. Uh, you could also go to doors here and it will say add handles and hinges. But remember, you click on add handles and hinges here, it's the same as clicking it right here. So I click it. Uh, I notice that these handles are here. If I look on my menu on the right, it works kind of like doors. I just drag the Euro pull over, let's say, Euro pull over to the base top section, and then I could drag that Euro pull over here. Notice it's going straight up and down for the drawer. We can tell it in the middle to be horizontal and set in the room. And it just goes and sets it. There is a way to change where the handles go. Um, uh, there's a lot of shortcuts. Like I said, if you hold the shift key down, shift, a little handle pops up on here. And if I wanted that to go over here, the handle, I just click it and it goes to that side. So, and all this is documented. And like I said, there's plenty of other videos. I'm not expecting to remember all this stuff today. This is kind of just a, a general overview. Now, when we go to molding, which we could go here or we could go to molding here, this is what you do at the end of a job. You click on add molding, you pick the molding you want in this list, and it's quite an extensive list that you can go through. You could create your own custom molding. That's important to know. So I'm just going to go and come back up to maybe just some kind of crown. So we'll go to notice it's three and a quarter, three and five eight. We'll go three and a quarter crown. It says overlap by zero. On a frameless cabinet, you wouldn't overlap, but on a face frame cabinet with a big top rail, you can overlap that cabinet and go wherever you want with it. But we're gonna go bottom line because it's gonna be aligned right there with, with the top of the cabinet. I'm gonna change molding in the room and it just knows to put the molding where it needs to go. It does keep track of all your molding uh, in KCD, you know, prices it, that kind of thing. And uh, the next thing that we'd probably want to do is go up to countertop edges, see top edges, just click on that. And you can come in and pick an edge you might want. Now, some are solid edges, some are wood edges, some people still do that. And you can also make your own custom edge profile. But for now, let's just use an OG edge. I change all in the room and it did change it. If we go to this side and we go to zoom, there's a little zoom right here. See that magnifying glass? I can kind of come in here, just drag it in and you notice it's got that edge profile. So these are just a few of the things. Uh, when I go to 3D, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that, but you can go into 3D, drag, hold your mouse button down. It's good to kind of get used to things. If I left mouse, that's me moving around in the room up or down. Um, and then if I right mouse, that takes whatever's in front of me. And as I hold in the center, it moves that around. So left mouse kind of moves you up or down. Right mouse moves what's in front of you. If I use my wheel on the mouse, I can scroll on it to zoom in or out. This is a low resolution drawing and we call it quick view. This view can be changed to a higher resolution rendering under drawing quality. Before going into 3D, you can enhance your 3D rendering by adding accessories. Wall outlets, baseboard, coffee maker, mugs, and other items will stage your 3D for a great presentation. 
Um, I'm just kind of giving you the quick, quick view. Now, another thing is we get plenty of people that don't want to get involved with colors. So there is a way in here for black and white. You'll notice a little toolbar there. You just click it. It goes to black and white. And when you go to print something and you go to file and you go to print drawings, what you're going to find is that this will allow you to select all your views, which there's only one elevation we put units on in a floor plan. You could select the others, but no need. But you do have the option of picking what dimension level. So if it's for a customer, you might do none. Um, there's portrait landscape. In this case, that that really does look like a landscape view to me. And notice I'm on black and white. So there are ways to set this up so that when you default it in your startup, you remember the startup that we were in set um, go to change, edit system, edit startup. There are places to set that it comes up black and white all the time or landscape in your printer settings. So just be aware there's places to set all of this stuff to come up to the way you like it more often. And when you go to print, there is a, a thing in the software that will allow you to select uh, a, a PDF um, right here so that when you want to create, I'm going to write it to my desktop. It's called a KCD drawing. I'm going to call this, um, we'll call it KCD web train. Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and save it. And it saves it to my desktop, which I could now email that picture right there and that view right there. So that makes it a lot easier. Um, you know, as far as PDF and setting it up to do it, um, that's just a matter of going up to your file um, and, and picking in here, you can pick uh, save current view as an image, or you can set it to merge or um, save drawings as a PDF. And then there are places that we can go on your settings to, to drop down and pick um, an actual PDF software. Um, we can help you out with um, downloading the, the Foxit reader and getting it so that you have that in your list to drop it down to, because that's something that will include with our software, a license of it. Um, there's no extra charge for that if you don't have a PD, PDF software already. Uh, PDF is something that it's a file type that I'm sure people have um, sent you PDFs before, but it's a great format to uh, email to your customer, uh, especially uh, these days. Um, so for now, I'm going to cut this short because I think there's a lot more I can go over on another webinar. And there are videos on our, at our website, kcdsoftware.com, and uh, there are video tutorials in there. In KCD, you can always go up to, to help, and you can go right down here to view online training videos. So when you click that, it brings us to the actual website where the training videos are, which are minute to three minute long, not as long as this webinar. Um, I do appreciate your time today. Uh, I think you're going to find that as you use the software, it just gets easier. Um, there's just a few tricks to it. Um, we do have uh, free technical support. We have the online training videos under help. There are um, subjects that can help you. Um, but for today, we're going to end this and we're going to thank you again for joining us. And obviously, any questions, reach out to us, email us uh, or go ahead and uh, give us a call. Thank you very much.